Make me sick, I taste those lies All on your lips, I feel like Throwing up, I feel like What's something I can call? What's something I can call on? I can, I can call you to action Tell you to subscribe to the channel And just welcome, welcome back to my channel What's up guys, how was your day? Um, I hope this is out on a Sunday If it is, then that means I just recorded this this morning <laughs> At 9.54 a.m. So, but I have a movie review because some of you wanted me to review movies like a certain person on YouTube. <laughs> I thought since I'm the... <laughs> I thought since I'm one of the biggest nerds of A Quiet Place that I should review it. And A Quiet Place Part 2 movie review is going to be coming out next, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what it, that's what's going to happen. But I wrote down a bunch of notes in my notepad <laughs> of, of A Quiet Place. So this is how this is how things are going to work around this place. Okay, listen up. This is how my my movie reviews are going to go. I watched only a little bit of the movie reviews of the uh Stuckman guy and a few other movie review channels like I like Found Flicks and uh that's all I can think of right now. But um Usually when I have a new idea or a new, like, routine that I'm gonna do, I usually, like, take that idea and I just kind of run with it and, and, like, do it my own way. I don't care how any other, anybody else does it. I just kind of do it my own way. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna read the notes that I took from the movie because I was watching it and I was, like, taking notes. <laughs> this is how it's gonna go. So I got only through, like, maybe half of the movie. And it was late at night and I was planning to make a certain video for a certain set of videos that's coming out soon. Yeah, I, so I had, I had to go to sleep soon because I had an important day of recording the next day, which was yesterday. So here we go, finally, A Quiet Place movie review. All right, so horror is something that I've always been interested in, but Outlast kind of ruined it for me for maybe about a year and a half now. <laughs> but I, I recently started getting back into it because like I start slow like with thrillers like Jurassic Park, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and then once when A Quiet Place came out, I was like, yo, this is perfect. And Netflix also helped out Bird with Bird Box and The Silence, right? The Silence is actually really close to what A Quiet Place is about with these monsters in the world that since only, he like, their only sense is hearing, right? They can't see, they can only hear. I think that's what uh, The Silence is about, right? It's, it's pretty much the same thing. These, there's these monsters in the world, you know, where the, you don't know where they came from. By the way, there's gonna be spoilers in this video. Very big warning. There is a lot of spoilers, probably. I recommend if you didn't watch it and you wanna watch it, click off the video now. I've never told anyone that before, but yeah. We learn about what these monsters are in A Quiet Place Part 2, but I'm gonna get to that in the next video, <laughs> so. And I'm, I'm gonna cover this video and that video about A Quiet Place Part 2 in the second, in the next movie review. So the movie starts off with day 89, and that makes it make sense to me now, because I was confused about what Part 2 was, because John Krasinski he dies in the first one, and then, I told you, there's spoilers. He dies in the first one, and then in the second one, he's miraculously there, but then for the rest of the movie, I didn't get to finish the second one, but he's not there, right? So I was like, what? What is this? So that led me to believe that it was actually a prequel story, and it says where they're from, but I'm not gonna say it, because that's, like, part two, so... Um, so I assume that it's day 89 into whatever this madness uh, of the world is now and that makes it make more sense. I was like, oh man, so like how are they dealing with this? You know how we're dealing with it in the world? Once when you give a movie a rule, they have to fall in love at the end and how do they do that? How do they communicate that rule? That or um, there's a killer alligator in the story. How do they communicate that? How like Lake Placid, do they do that well? I'd say they kind of do, right? But I was young when I was watching it. So I thought everything was fucking cool. But anyway, this movie was given the rule of silence. I'd say that they did that fucking well. This, this movie is like freaking people either really like it or really hate it. But I would say as someone who loves film and movies that they communicated this very well and it's a masterpiece movie. And this movie should be used as an example to most of other horror films and what they should be like and how they should follow rules. Given the movie, the role of silence, that's pretty hard. I can't think of any 
other way to to like do that except to have the movie entirely muted but I mean, obviously there's sound in this video, but like, as for a movie goes, they kept it entertaining, and uh, the when they communicated the point of view for the deaf girl, I don't remember her name, <laughs> fuck's sake, what kind of movie review is this? For the point of view of the deaf girl to not the deaf girl's point of view, like, the point of view of, of her is silence, like, whenever, there are a few parts in the movie where the camera was pointed at her and the movie was silent, then it was muted, but then the point of view was from the dad, and then there was a bunch of shit happening in the in the road, like they were they had to run away from the monster that was attacking the, the people in the convenience store and shit. And not only that, but the sign language, where there would be talking, there isn't. So that's even less of the sound. <laughs> and did you know that that actress is actually deaf in real life? I didn't even know that. I learned that a few days ago. I was like, wow, what a freaking, what a freaking G. What a legend. I mean, how much quieter can you get with a silent movie by having an actual deaf queen on the set? Literally. Also, I love John Krasinski. A few stressors, things that stressed me out in the movie. I'm just, I think that's the right word to use. I'm just trying to use big words in this, you know, new series that I'm doing. This could either be good or bad, by the way. A stressor, I don't know, something that causes mental strain. And for some reason, I assumed that that would be a good thing. The little bro with his damn rocket. Oh my god, it's like he doesn't understand. <laughs> I mean, he is a kid, but god damn. Damn it. He was told no three to four times. When the end, also another stressor would be when the rocket went off, he died. I mean, that's kind of sad. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Another thing would be when they knocked over the lantern in the living room when they were playing Monopoly, I think the game was. That was, that was sick. That was sickening. It was crazy. And also, I wrote down, whenever you make a noise, ever, wherever in this movie, if they make a noise, there's that long pause that you have to endure to see if you fucked up or not, to see if they heard you or not, and if you're safe or not. And a lot of the time, they did hear you, and you did fuck up. You're dead, it did. And so, but yeah, the a few signs that, that you would have would be like if, if the birds fly away, if you hear the birds in the background, if they fly away and shit. And then they would hear, you would hear a loud ass bang somewhere. All right, turning the page. And you know, even the sister gave the little brother the rocket. Does she not know what sound is? No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, I, I guess he paid the price for it. <laughs> and this, this movie also, I, I feel like this movie has some kind of relation with what we're all going through today compared to what they're going through, you know, having a bunch of monsters, having this kind of pandemic around the world, but only they don't know what the rest of the world are going through, because they're kind of stranded e with each other. And it, and uh, don't those monsters mess with, like, the electronics and stuff once when they are around? I don't know. Also, a pretty random thought that I had was that the other son, like, the other brother, um, has probably never seen a vehicle in real life turned on and like going fast you know maybe when he was a toddler but other than that he was still being carried in the arms of his parents so okay and obviously the dad john krasinski is doing his best to find help signal and help his daughter hear he's also trying to build an, a hearing aid Inst but instead of becoming a hearing aid for herself, she becomes a lethal weapon to the monsters, bitch! Um, and I wrote down also only the monsters in the area not trying to expand, question mark? Basically what I meant by that is they were only um, tolerating and surviving in that area. Like they were only dealing with the monsters in that area because they had current monsters in the area, or known current monsters in the area, three. Like, they were only counting in their area. They weren't trying to leave that area, but, I mean, they did, they did invest a lot of time into it, to be fair. Like, the, uh, sand trails, that makes no noise when you walk, so it would be hard for them to move. If you were to try to cross this state or something, go out of state, go see someone from far away, 
then you would most likely step step on a twig during that travel, and uh, you would die. <laughs> you would suffer the fate of some rocket child from the beginning of the movie. <laughs> and in this movie, every single living thing lives in silence. Even when saying grace at dinner, everything is in silence. Everything. I don't know how I'd be able to handle that. I mean, I'm ADD, right? And an introvert, so I don't mind it. I, matter of fact, sometimes I love it when it rains and it, when it's gloomy outside. Okay? Who, rain gang, come on, like the video. Let me see you, magic fingers. I don't think even I can handle that. That would be insanity. I would be like, yo, I need to, I need to make a video, dude. But anyway, then it goes to day 473, and that's kind of sad that they didn't make it through that. I mean, it's been a year, and we were dealing with a certain pandemic. <laughs> Jeez, we're almost on our, we're, our, our, did we make it to day 4073 yet? I have no clue. Because it kind of took a, a while for things to kick up, right? Yeah, I, th I think so. But uh, also another uh, moment that I remember, because I'm kind of out of notes now. Another moment that I remember is that the dad was helping the son, even. Uh, Shut up. Oh, by the way, there's Benji. <laughs> he was helping the son. He was teaching him, taking him out on journeys, going to the river. And he was telling him that um, you can make sound as long as there's a bigger sound next to you. You can make small sounds. Not big, but small. As long as there's a bigger sound next to you. And it's like a natural sound, I guess. Because, I mean, that's what I always thought. Like, did the monsters try to attack the river? Or like, lightning? Because lightning is loud. God, they should probably try to do that. That would be a neat-ass weapon, to be completely honest with you. Hey, alright, so I'm back. It's later on in the day. It's 5.21 p.m. Uh, I just finished re-watching the movie, and holy shit, do I have more to say. I had to go to my grandma's house, hang out with a bunch of family for my grandma's birthday. Uh, it was yesterday. She turned 81. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna include some clips. I recorded some today so I can add here, but I don't think I'm gonna put them in. Yeah, I don't know. I have more to say about the movie, and I'm just gonna start. By the way, this movie is is a much better experience with headphones, so I truly recommend you to wear headphones when watching this movie. Or like if you have a surround sound set up like in the movies. But um, anyway, I wrote some more down in my notebook, so we're gonna read from it. I wrote down that this whole movie is like, whenever you're the first to wake up in uh, a house with a, a whole group of people, and you're the first to wake up and you're trying to be quiet, this is exactly what that movie is like. Like, this is exactly what that movie is like. And you can also watch it if you're the first to wake up. <laughs> you can also watch it when everyone's still asleep in the house and you try not to wake anybody up. Throughout the whole movie, I noticed that the monsters inch closer to, to the house. Uh, the very end is a very different story. But continuing on with day 473, I don't know if I got to that part in the in the first half of the video, but the thing with the river, when uh, the daughter wanted to go with the dad, but he took the son instead. I, I think he just wanted to, wanted to hang out with the son, you know? So by the way, I, I figured out their names. The dad's name is Lee, mom's name is Evelyn, the son's name is Marcus, and the daughter's name is Reagan. Some more stressors from the movie. Some more things that stressed me out. When the bag got caught on the stairs and the nail, the nail came up. Excuse him, wow. It stuck out. And then there was a long sense of stress and suspense until she finally stepped on it. And, and, and until she stepped on it, it was a whole different kind of stress. Because that, my friend, is when she started giving birth. And oh my gosh. But the whole waterfall part was so heartwarming because that was like the only part where they were actually able, that, that was the only spot where they were actually able to scream or like let something out, you know? So that that's kind of mind blowing to think of how big of a toll that these monsters had on the entire, you know, setup that humans had for themselves. <laughs> but I didn't think the part where um, Evelyn, I mean, the, where the, the part where Reagan left her mom, Evelyn, uh, in the house by herself was a very nice... Th I don't think that was a very nice move. But she did go to pay respects to her brother who died. She blamed herself for it, which was in which is entirely partially true. <laughs> it wasn't her fault that 
that he grabbed the batteries. The, the little kid, he grabbed the batteries for the rocket, which made him die whenever the rocket went on. Whenever it made it went off and made some noise. But yeah, it was nice that he did that, that she, that she went to his, like, grave. But at the same time, stuff went down, so. And she knew that it was almost time for her mom to give birth, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure she knew. Another stressful part was the suicidal man. <sighs> oh my god, was this a scary part of the movie. <laughs> it was so scary, but we all knew, let's be honest, we all knew that he was going to scream. I mean, gosh, god damn it. The movie gave so many hints and so many messages within such a short period of time. His mouth being shut, his wife or that, that lady or whoever she was really was, uh, dead on the ground. Did he kill her? Did she die from a monster? I don't know. You'd think that the monster would have gotten him too. But whatever was going on, he didn't want to experience it anymore, obviously. So then he screams and then... I don't even know if I'm doing this whole movie re review thing right, but we will just continue. <sighs> Evelyn's water finally broke. Oh my god. <laughs> this means she had to walk downstairs where the nail was, and of course, and she stepped on it, screamed, knocked something down, and then holy shit, the monster came in the house. Was there only one monster in the house, or was there two? I swear, it it made it seem like there was two, because whenever the whenever Lee, the dad, and Marcus, the son, saw the red lights, they saw a monster walking in the house, but there was already one in the house with Evelyn. So I don't know. I don't know. There was still one in the freaking house, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, man. Um, and I still have to watch the second part, but we're going to we're going to continue. The light signal thing was very smart, by the way. That like they have such like a system with this thing, and like if this happens, you go here. If that happens, you go here. Set off the firework, which is a part of the movie. Uh, the monster in the house and birth. Not a good combo. Holy shit! Stress simulator at its finest. Very stressful. Oh my god. Damn, that woman is powerful. <laughs> when I said that there was a whole system, there's also tricks that they all follow. The mom, I mean, I don't know if this was like part of the plan, but she had a timer, a cooking timer, you know, one of those white clocks things, clock looking things. She had that, she put it across the room, she went to the other side of the room, and then it was ticking, the monster came downstairs, which was creepy as shit, and then the thing went off, and then the monster was like, Woo! And, and then she was like, Re! and then she went upstairs, watching for the nail, obviously, and then she went in the tub, and then holy shit, the monster's going up the stairs too. I was scary as shit. And then I was like, what the fuck is happening? And then the blood started to come out, and then like the birth happened, the fireworks went off, and then this is where shit really went down. You may not believe, you may think that things have already went down, but no, things get even crazier, and I'm gonna even talk even faster now. The son with the fireworks, the dad with the gun, the daughter, to the rescue, she came running running back whenever she saw the fireworks going off. And then that's when the mom finally had the baby. And then the monster was near mom. The mom's giving birth. She gave it. But we forget. Yeah, the fireworks went off. The distraction the distra the distra the, distra the distraction worked. The mom had the baby, but the son, the but the son was still out there by the tr the tractor, the fireworks. And you're like, hmm. <laughs> and then the the Evelyn, I mean, uh, God damn it, Reagan was still out in the in the woods on her way back because she saw the fireworks. And I was like, God damn it, there's monsters outside going to the fireworks where they are possible, they possibly are. But then, where the fireworks were. The sun was running, he knocked himself out, he stayed on the ground, the light, thank god for the light. Reagan f saw the light, and he was like, oh shit, jump scare, ha, cheap ass jump scare, bitch. It didn't scare me, not one bit. <coughs> so then, the dad was like, oh shit, he's with the, he's still with the, the white, and then, and then the flood in the basement, but like, okay, no, 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 no. If I were to find someone, like, by the tractor, I'd be like, oh shit. This is exactly what would happen. Oh shit, dude, what the f*** is happening here? Oh shit, he's by the tractor? Bro, I'd be talking to myself the whole time. And while she was like investigating what the heck this light was, which was, which was Marcus, I, I would be talking to myself. And while all this was happening, the monster was right there behind her. Bro, I'd be talking to myself in confusion and like, 
question. I would like be questioning shit, talking to myself out loud, laughing and shit. I, I, I'm loud sometimes when I'm by myself and I, when I think I'm by myself, especially. The flood in the basement, in, in the baby room basement thing, the monster was in the same room, then it submerged. That's another stressor. These are all stressors, by the way. These are, I'm still talking about the stressors, okay? <laughs> <laughs> then you have to remember, like, will the baby cry? And then she, like, went behind, like, a little, the waterfall, like, where the leak was, you know? The flood was happening. Thank God they were drowning in corn at that part. Because when if they hadn't done that, the the noise wouldn't have like distracted the monster into going back outside. You know where the whole family was, and I know for sure if the dad heard them, if Lee heard them, then the monster for sure heard them. The first the first weapon thing I wrote down, by the way, I forgot to talk about this, but whenever she I said that I was talk I would be talking to myself. That's when like the hear the hearing aid was like. Whee! And the monster like ran away. That was the first weapon thing. And then this is where the second weapon thing is. I, I call it this the weapon thing because like Reagan is now a weapon to to for these monsters. Uh, the third weapon thing was when, but was happening, but she turned it off. That silent attack was awesome. Okay, like when they were in the truck. Um, and this is where it starts to get sad. But when they were in the truck, she when she turned it off, the monster was already struggling. But until she turned it off, the it was like, oh shit, well, I'm gonna fuck y'all asses up now. Because it, it went to her point of view now. Like I was mentioning earlier, it was the deaf point of view. And it was like, oh shit, you saw the, you saw um, Marcus like, oh no! And then the glass broke and it was like, Poosh. oh no! <laughs> and then the dad's suicide. Lee's suicide. Oh my gosh. Was that heart-wrenching or what? Oh my god. I don't think he had to do it. I'm pretty sure he could have like thrown the axe. Like the axe more than anything was probably the best bet because it was heavier than the pitchfork that he could have chosen. He could have like thrown it on the other side of the roof and then got in the truck and then went to the house and everybody would have been alive. But he screamed and then it attacked them and then they drove home. I think that would have been a, a good idea too, right? I don't know. I just don't think the suicide was necessary. I don't think it's ever necessary, to be completely honest. But when they made it back to the house, Reagan sees how much work Lee put in just for her and her hearing, which I thought was very important to note because of how much she put him down, saying like that it won't work or something like that. Yeah, she said it in sign language. I tried to remember. I'm sorry. So that that was that was that was sad. That I mean that was heartwarming but sad because it was telling us what was instead of what is anymore. And how much work he also put in to help them adapt and, you know, stay thriving. I mean, the sand roads and everything just helped out tremendously. Except for that poor raccoon, if you know what I'm talking about. And the most badass part was the ending. Mom had the gun, Reagan had the ear weapon, and Marcus had the baby. Holy shit, so we have to remember, will the baby cry? When the monster came down, back down the stairs, mom had the gun pointed at him the whole time. She had it just like this. <laughs> Regan was like, oh fuck, what do we do? And then, <laughs> and then, and then, Regan was like, oh shit, I turned it on. And then it, it distracted the monster for a little bit. And he was like, oh fuck, I, I can, I'm adapted to this now, bitch. I bet you got me. And she was like, oh yeah, bitch. And then with the, the microphone thingy, she was like, huh. Super Saiyan. <laughs> she went fucking Super Saiyan. And it, it, Amplified it so much. Now, turning the page. I turned the page twice. That was like two pages worth of notes. However, that badass gunshot that the mom took on that monster to finish it off completely attracted many other monsters. And this leads to the very end of the movie. According to them, they were ready since uh, Reagan amplified the sound thing, the radio signal or whatever it was, and uh, Evelyn, the mom, cocked the gun. Led me to believe that they were ready, but do they have enough ammo? Or is Reagan ready for more headaches? I don't know, we'll find. We'll have to find out on the next movie review. So that's it, that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed, did I do this right? Did I, did I do a good job on a movie, on reviewing a movie? I just kind of summarized, I just kind of said what a few parts, what happened in a few parts, but 
I mean, I mentioned my love for it, what happened, and everything, everything, you know? So, leave a like, tell me what I should do, what I shouldn't do more often or less often. Subscribe to the channel, what ideas you want to see me do in the future, and every, all that good jazz. Okay, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to upload this tonight, and bye. <laughs> Beep, tweet, bot.